Hey guys, it's Angelo Bangelo from GameLeap.com, and this is the continuation of my Chen Guide. This part is going to go over all of the different creeps that you can persuade with Holy Persuasion. Now there are four types of creep camps that are in the game. There is Easy, Medium, Large, and Ancient. You will be getting the majority of your creeps from the large camps, so we're going to go over those first. The first creep that we're going to go over from the hard camps is the Wild Wing Ripper, or I just call him an Owl. Now when you pick up an Owl, there are two benefits that he offers. One is he gives bonus armor to everything around you that is allied hero or unit, and the second is that you can use an activatable ability that he has called Tornado. Tornado costs 200 mana, which means that you can cast two per Owl, it has a minute cooldown, and it lasts for about 40 seconds. Now some other interesting things about the tornadoes that you should know is one, that they give vision 300 radius wherever you cast them. They also stack on top of one another so you can have three tornadoes going at once and it does huge amounts of damage that includes in like the Roche Pit and everything. And late game, don't undervalue the range of the tornado because you can send it deep into the base to turn off things like Earthshaker, Blink Dagger and such. Now as far as how to use this creep, late game you're probably going to use him for pushing for the extra armor and then early game if he's your first camp that's usually a pretty good sign. He's a good creep to start out with. What I'll normally do is I'll finish farming the creep camp and then I'll send the owl mid and cast a tornado on the mid just to uh, zone him out and harass and I may send two tornadoes depending on how tough of a matchup it is. Meanwhile while I'm harassing with mid I'll be stacking the hard camp so that I can stack that up and uh, farm it later. You can get four camps usually by the time he does both tornadoes you have to send them back and then you bring them back to you and that usually will get you four levels. You'll be about f a little over level four when you're done. Next creep that we'll talk about is a bit more simple. He's uh, the Hellbear Smasher, or the Cranberry, or the Clapper, whatever you want to call him. He basically has a War Stomp that's uh, kind of similar to Pander and Brewmaster's Clap. Um, basically just slows and does damage. You can use this to gank very well, and in team fights, he actually has an aura that increases your attack speed, so he's good to have uh, at least one in your army late game. The main weakness of ganking with him is that you need the opponent to be completely out of position and you have to approach them from behind their position because of his slow move speed. But basically you'll go up, right click your hero to the opponent, you'll use clap on the Ursa, and then you'll micro the Ursa and move him back and forth to kind of block the retreat while you're right clicking with Chen and then you can use your W at the last second to get the kill. The next creep that we'll go over is the Seder Tormentor. You've probably seen him before and you've probably been killed by him before because he likes to shoot his little Hadouken ball at people randomly in the jungle and kill them for last hits. He can be kind of a jerk. Now this creep you literally have to send mid or to the lane. He is incredibly strong in the laning phase and incredibly weak in the late game. He's strong in the laning phase because he can shoot his Shockwave or Hadouken, which is what most people call it. It's uh, 100 damage, which is huge early game, and he has an aura called Unholy Aura that's basically a ring of health in health regen. So you get this guy first creep camp. It's basically your job to send him mid and win mid for your team. His right click damage is respectable. His Hadouken is 100 damage, which is huge. And the fact that he gives your mid an unholy aura, which like I said is about a ring of health worth of regen, makes you able to trade last hits very, very well with the opposing mid. It's basically an unwinnable lane if you send a Seder Tormentor to your mid lane. Really helps out your team a ton. So don't ever use this guy to farm in the beginning of the game. Send a mid or at least your safe lane to help them. The last of the hard camp creeps would be the DTS, the Dark Troll Summoner, or the Trapper as some people call him. Now the Trapper is good in general, he's probably my favorite creep. He has a ranged ability that will basically ensnare any opponent, and it also has a mini stun, so it can stop TPs, and it goes through BKB, which is amazing. The fact that he can also summon skeletons as a, uh, a secondary ability gives you the ability to cut a creep wave by jumping the skeleton, moving him past the tower, and pulling the creep wave away from the tower to give you an easier tower early game when you're pushing. You just take the skeleton, micro him past the tower, and pull the next creep wave away from the tower uh, so that you can basically beat on it relentlessly and take it very easily. The main downside to this guy is that he doesn't offer any auras and he only has one armor, so he dies very, very quickly if someone focuses him or if a tower hits him a few times, it really, really weakens him. But overall, this is going to be your setup creep in the early game for ganks. If you want to use a Centaur Stomp, or a, if you want to use a Clapper, if you want to use anything, you basically have to have this range stun to set it up. Otherwise, the move speed of your creeps are just too slow to really do anything. All right, now let's move on to the medium camps. First medium camp that we'll talk about is the Centaur medium camp. Normally take the blue Centaur as he has the War Stomp, which is a... 2 second stun on heroes, 3 second stun on creeps, not that you'll ever be using it on creeps, but the 2 second stun is very very effective, especially against heavy melee teams, because if you have 1 or 2 centaurs approaching the heroes, they kind of have to back or risk getting stunned for 2 to 4 seconds. 
Late game, this is also one of your stronger creeps because two second stun is always useful and it's always useful for zoning. I mean, you can even make people pop BKB when a centaur is running at them just because they don't want to risk getting two seconds stomped. Also worth noting that the baby centaur and even the baby ursa in the uh, hellbear camp also offer a cloak aura, which gives you a 5% magic resistance to all nearby heroes and 20% magic resistance to all nearby creeps. Now, this doesn't seem like a huge deal, but against someone like Alina or a Zeus, it's very, very helpful. Otherwise, I never really pick them up. I'll always just go for the blue centaur instead. But it's just a situational creep to take. Up next is the Alpha Wolf, which is a pretty straightforward creep. He just gives you a huge damage burst to everything around you, and he himself has a crit chance. Overall, this guy should just be right-clicked to the carry and never really touched again. You don't want to be pushing with him too much because if he dies, it's a lot of damage that your team loses. And the fact that he has higher move speed than the rest of your creeps means he's usually going to be moving up at the front and requires a lot of individual micro. So just right-click him to your carry and let him do his aura thing and set him and forget him. That's it. Late game, this is probably one of your strongest creeps, so don't ever farm him, don't ever skip him. I mean, past 30 or 40 minutes, this is a huge damage boost to your team. He's 100% necessary if you ever see him. Never skip him. Now I've got the uh, Ogre Frost Mage. He's a pretty situational little blue dude. Uh, you can usually use him best against high physical damage. A lineup, someone like a TA or like a Life Stealer, anyone that does a lot of physical damage, especially if they're melee because the slow really affects them a lot. He's very, very powerful. Otherwise, he's mainly a defensive creep. You can't use, you know, kill or anything really. But if you're against like a Zeus, Lina, or heavy magic damage, he's pretty worthless. He's also pretty decent at slowing the damage that Roche does because uh, he's basically like an improved ice armor from Lich. And it really lowers the amount of damage that your heroes and creeps take during the Roche because it slows its attack speed by so much. And the attacks do very little because of the increased armor. Now we've also got the Mud Golems. That's another medium creep. These guys used to be a nightmare for Chen because you couldn't possess them. Now you can. They don't do a ton of damage. They do have a stun with that's a range that has a 30 second cooldown, but it has no mana cost. This is okay. I mean, you can chain them together, but the stun is so low, it's not really good for uh, any sort of damage. You could use it to interrupt other channeling spells like Crystal Maiden Ult or something since it's ranged. Uh, the travel time is decent for the rock. Overall, I don't really like these guys because if you take them to gank, uh, now you have to go back and farm, and they're really bad at farming. You want to be getting creeps that have a fine balance between ganking and farming. Golems are great at ganking, they're horrible at farming. So once you're not ganking, slows Chen's levels and uh, experience down. Not always worth picking up in my opinion. For the easy creep camps, there are pretty much two creeps that you can get. There's either the Harpy Stormcrafter or the Kobold. The Harpy Stormcrafter offers nothing to Chen himself, but he's more of like a team creep. He's mainly just used to win middle. Uh, what you do is you just grab him, send him mid, and he has a very spammable nuke. It's 140 damage minus magic armor, and then uh, it's a 900 cast range for it and only 4 second cooldown. He can cast a total of 10 of them before he's out of mana. The only problem is once he's out of mana, you're going to be completely under farmed and under leveled so you have to spend a lot of time stacking the hard camp in between your lightning and then you have to pray for a owl so that you can farm back up and catch back up in levels otherwise you're going to be kind of screwed now the kobold is another guy that you can get from the easy camps he's basically just like a little goblin dude with goblet and uh he's pretty worthless early game and pretty worthless mid game but he's more powerful late game when the movement speed aura that he provides is actually useful he helps you move your ancients around helps you move your creeps around your rotation is a little bit faster you can kite melees a little bit more easily but uh yeah he should never be picked up until it's like the late late game and all of your creep nukes are pretty much worthless because the damage is so low compared to the hero health pools on the opposing team. The last types of creeps that you can get are the Ancients, and you can only get them with the Aghanim Scepter. If you are level 6, you can get 1 Ancient. If you're level 11, you get 2. If you're level 16, you can get 3. You can never have 4 Ancients. Uh, ancients are extremely tanky, extremely powerful. Um, most of the time, you'll only be getting 2, because rarely do you ever hit 16 as a Chen. Normally, you'll either lose the game or win the game by that time. The first Ancient we'll go over is the Thunderhide. Uh, he's Pretty decent against high melee lineups. He has an ability called Slam that uh, slows attack speed and move speed for heroes that are around him. The radius is only 250, so it's extremely small. But if they have someone with a blink dagger, normally what happens is the blink dagger hero will blink out of position, stun someone or whatever, then everyone will follow up. And when everyone's following up, it's a good opportunity to move your uh, triceratops, is what I call them. You just move them into all the heroes and get a slam. You can get like a two, three, even four hero slam, and uh, that can win a team fight on its own. The second ability it has is frenzy, and that just increases attack speed for another hero. Very good on right-click heroes like Drow, Shadow Fiend, etc. That can help you push a tower very, very quickly. 
second guy we'll talk about is the golem. The golem really doesn't offer much except a huge, huge health pool increase. It increases it by 15% of all units around him. And that includes heroes and creeps as well. You should pretty much have one of these guys in your army at any given time because he helps both versus physical damage and magical damage. He doesn't contribute much to pushing, but the team fights, he offers a lot of sustain. And that's very important because the opportunity to go Greaves, Hand of God, then Greaves again versus just Greaves, Hand of God, and then people are dead, it gives you a huge amount of sustain in team fights. Don't ever skip this guy. Just at least get one. You never really need two. The last ancient that we'll talk about is the dragon. The ancient black dragon is, in my opinion, the best ancient that you can get, especially against high physical damage lineups. He has an aura that gives you armor, and they stack, so you can get three dragons, and all three of them give the exact same amount of armor. He also has an activatable ability called Fireball that can do almost a thousand damage before magic reduction, and they stack. So if you have three, and let's say you have Chronosphere, and you cast three on one hero, you can do almost 3,000 damage within that 10 seconds, which they won't stand in it but you'll still be doing about 600 which is a ton considering the cooldown is only 10 seconds on the fireball itself they also offer flying vision when you cast the fireball it gives you flying vision of that area and they also have a splash damage so overall i think this is the strongest ancient you can get get as many of these guys as possible i like to have two of these and one golem in most situations and the very last creep that we're going to talk about is the siege unit. Now, a lot of people like to grab the siege unit because it does extra damage to towers and it's incredibly tanky. But I'll tell you right now, this is one of the worst creeps that you could possibly get. The only time you should ever get a siege unit is after you wipe a team and you are pushing. Then you can take their siege unit just to make the push faster and guarantee that you're going to get at least one or two sets of racks. Besides that, they offer nothing to ganks. They offer nothing to team fights. They do nothing except push towers. They are extremely extremely weak at everything except pushing when there are no heroes. So after you wipe them, feel free to grab a siege unit if there's one in the next wave. Otherwise, never ever grab one. It's a waste of a creep. That's gonna about wrap it up for this section of the guide. I'm sorry it was so long, guys, but I just wanna go in depth on all the creeps so that you understand all of them fully and their priorities and what they can and cannot do. If you have any questions on the creeps, which you very well may, because I certainly didn't cover every aspect of them, please ask them in the comment section and I will get to them as soon as I possibly can. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.